So I'm sitting down, chilling with my family on a Friday evening when I get a missed voice call from Ramzi Kamis, one of my great friends and colleagues, an excellent cardiologist, who uh, just cryptically sends me this uh, blood pressure trace. And the thing that's uh, worrying about this is the heart rate of 42 beats per minute. He says, so sorry with the prayer, the universal prayer uh, um, emoji for sorry. And then he says CHB question mark, which typically means complete heart block. And then he sends me this ECG and this ECG. And then he sends me a message about his grandmother-in-law at the moment, who's three and a half thousand miles away in Palestine, who has had syncope over the last three to four weeks uh, with the most recent episode occurring three days ago. And uh, then I say stay objective. And, and the reason I say this is because by this time I have called him back and explained what we've seen on the traces. And what we've seen is as follows. So this is the trace, uh, which is recorded from a six lead cardia mobile ECG recording device. And what you can see here is that this is pretty bradycardic. I would say something like 40 beats per minute. Uh, QRS complex, but very slow. A T wave, but in, but in the baseline, you can probably make out a P wave here, a P wave here, a P wave, P wave. It's a bit, it's a bit messy, but when we go back and look at the trace that was taken an hour and a half prior to this, you can see um, a much more regular and rapid pattern, about 60 beats a minute, with a P followed by QRS, T wave, P, QRS, T. So this is normal sinus rhythm or sinus bradycardia. And this is, I would say, at least two to one, if not higher degree of heart block. And so I um, naturally respond to Ramsey to see, say what I think it is, that it could be an episode of intermittent two to one or three to one heart block. And so we then have a conference call uh, with his uh, mother-in-law to describe what the grandmother-in-law is facing. And at the present moment at uh, Friday at about 10 p.m., uh, she's in bed, but not feeling too well. And indeed, when she then gets admitted to hospital, this is the kind of trace that uh, we see, which is a, a trace where we can see an intermittent period of complete heart block with a seven second pause here uh, with uh, recovery of conduction. And so at the end of the conference, um, we agreed to admit her to hospital or we had agreed to admit her to hospital. And I would say she's waiting for a pacemaker sometime, hopefully soon over this weekend. And so this is one of the ways in which we can use uh, something like the Alive Call Cardio Mobile, and this uh, uh, patient who who is the grandmother-in-law of a dear friend and colleague of mine was able to procure the Cardio Mobile uh, fairly urgently in the context of feeling unwell, and uh, show some traces, uh, which uh, was able to demonstrate very clearly a pathology that needed fixing very soon. So, uh, in summary, uh, this kind of mobile handheld technologies, which can either be the Alive Call or even the Apple Watch Series 4, 5, or 6, can sometimes be used beyond the application for atrial fibrillation to diagnose dangerous heart rhythm conditions.